In this next video, I'd like to demonstrate how we can utilize procedural textures to generate the different types of bump maps, displacement maps, and images on our surfaces. So what is a procedural texture? Well, a procedural texture is an image that is generated from mathematical code or algorithms. Now, unlike image maps, procedural textures are not immediately viewable in Moto's viewport, uh, the OpenGL viewport, that is. You actually have to render out the scene or render out your image uh, in order to see the procedurals on your surfaces. So in order to do this, we can either view this in RayGL, uh, we can activate RayGL for the viewport, or we can just simply bring up the preview render. In this case, I'm going to split my screen vertically instead of horizontally by using the Control shift tilde key to bring up a pop-up menu. It allows me to split that screen. And then I'm going to use the same commands, Control shift tilde to assign the preview render to that new window. Now you'll notice right off the bat that the image looks nothing like dots. And that's because by default, the projection type for procedurals are always solid. Now you can change that by simply using the drop down menu and we'll change it to UV map and we'll reference the correct UV map for our object, which is texture. As you can see now, it looks like dots. And uh, let's just go ahead and go to the uh, texture uh, parameters there under texture layers and adjust some of the settings. In this case, let's uh, adjust the color of the dots themselves. And I'll click on that bar and bring up the color requester and I'll click on red, click OK. And now you can see we've changed a simple parameter of that procedural image. And of course, we can change other parameters such as the dots width as well as the transition width to give them a softer or harder edge. As mentioned earlier, by default, all images and procedurals are applied as a diffuse color map. But we can change the way the effect is on the surface of our object by simply uh, clicking on the effect column and uh, bringing up the pop-up menu and uh, just selecting the effect that we want. In this case, we'll use a bump map which is nested directly under the surface shading parameter. And you can see that uh, doesn't have much effect until we uh, change the transition width. And there we can actually see the dots acting as bumps or dimples on our surface of our object. So let's experiment with a different type of procedural. So I'm just going to go up and remove the dots uh, texture. And then I'm going to add a layer. And I'm going to go down to Enhance Moto Textures. Now, there are literally dozens and dozens of textures that you can choose from. However, if you go to the Help menu and go down to the Online Documentation and bring up the Online Documentation and type in the search field Enhance, and it should bring you to a link that will take you directly to the uh, enhanced web page that shows you all of the various textures, samples at least, of all the various textures that there are in the enhanced texture library. And I find this a very, very handy way of actually picking a texture that I want to work with at first before actually applying it. And then I can actually click on that uh, texture in the left field there and see what the various settings are. So yeah, so this is a really, really helpful guide to get started with the enhanced texture sets. So let's get back to our model here and I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to go down to enhance moto textures and go down to uh, let's see, uh, let's try the uh, tiles and uh, use a uh, diamond deck texture pattern on there. And right off the bat, you can see that it is not mapped correctly. It's mapped as a solid. So what I need to do is go in and change the projection type from solid to UV map. And then I need to just select the correct UV map. And now we can see we've got this uh, simple crisscross kind of diamond pattern on our surface. And now let's just jump over to the texture layers uh, tab there and uh, adjust some of the settings on this particular texture. All right, so first thing I think I'll start out with is the, uh, the grout width right there at um, 40%. 
and uh, we'll go to bevel width at around 100%. And yeah, and I'll hit the U repeats at 13 and the V repeats at around 20 or so. Now notice that I am working strictly as a diffuse color. And uh, I'm doing this so that I can quickly see the results of my changes, of my uh, modifications of the parameters, uh, until I get something that I like. Now, it's going to look different once we apply this as a, a bump map or a displacement map, but you'll find it's much faster to work with these as diffuse color images uh, while you zero in on the look that you're trying to achieve. Now this is where your textures get really interesting and that's adjusting the disturb parameters of the texture. So I'm going to go to the disturb octaves and I'm just going to bump that up to about five or 5.5 right around there. And the magnitude is usually set to zero, but once we dial that up, you can see right away that it actually does start to create some very interesting uh, disturbance or modulation of the images of the imagery. All right, let's just adjust a few more of these parameters. I'm going to change the disturb scale down to 0.75 and uh, the disturb uh, detail uh, probably uh, bring that up a little bit. And yeah, so we've gone from very square to kind of groovy here. So <laughs> now let's go ahead and change the effect from uh, diffuse color and change that to bump. And right away we can see that, yeah, it does uh, affect our surface as a bump map. Now let's try changing that to a displacement map and see what it looks like. So I'll go all the way down to uh, shader surface. And there we are. We have a full-fledged bump map. Now remember, we have to go to the render settings and uh, all the way to the se ed settings edge tap and make sure that displacement as, as bump is uh, selected. And we can also change the uh, displacement rate and ratio if we want to as well. And as with any of the layer items in the shader tree, you can stack them and blend them to come up with literally an endless variety of images and shapes. So definitely check out the online documentation for the enhanced moto textures to begin working with this type of procedural imagery.